Ah, uh, yes, yes. I think that there's a lot in store for sure. And we are going to transition into our first game, yes. in our first round. And officially of transition off of lo-fi level of casting. Lo -fi. Yeah, we can speak a lot <laughs> now. So hopefully you guys can hear us. If you are, cannot hear, uh, it says Dan's a bit low still. We can try and mess with this. Try and, uh, try and just talk to me, guys, so you can let me know if uh, if I got to come in any louder or not. Okay. Only cool. a little. I was Get also that chesty low. voice. I was talking low. Yeah, right? we were like, trying to be respectful, respectful of Machado, the tournament, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, guys. We can move this closer. We can have some fun. All right. So we have Carlos F. versus Eric F. Um, so I can look up and we can get a you know a good gander here at what we're playing. We have Ruby Amethyst. Uh, what a surprise. On the right. No, it's not the most played deck. So mm -hmm. I will have those stats. I promise I'll have those in good time. But um, what do we have? So do we see on the left here yet? We, do we get, do we get the like mirror? It looks like the mirror. Oh, yep. okay, to guys. kick things off. So we got kicked off with one of the toughest mirror matches in the game. Um, and we'll have to see how this one goes. We might have to keep the chat a little excited for this round. So, we may, you know. Yeah, we yeah. We might have to have a little bit. But we got it's an one of the marathon matches. Yeah, it's tough. A bit it's on a, the longer end. It's a tough one. So okay, For anyone that needs a bit of an overview of what you can expect over these next couple of days, today we are going through the swish portion. Swish. 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 Swiss I like portion. swish. I swish, swish, swish is good. Cool. Swish is good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But, no, we're keeping it to swish for today to whittle it down to our final 16 that will compete tomorrow at the PPG Lorcana OP Tour Miami and we're getting into our very first matchup if you have been playing Lorcana you may not be surprised by the fact that we see Ruby Amethyst at the start but we were talking a bit earlier about the uh, maturing of the meta and what we can maybe expect in terms of decks here today right so in this particular game um, I'm pretty confident we already see a turn one uh, Archimedes followed up by now turn two Archimedes uh, Carlos was able to get on the board early for an early one lore gain, but this is honestly not the turns that are really relevant in this particular matchup. It's a much later game. In all honesty, um, it, without knowing your opponent does, uh, for Carlos for turn one, it's okay to be safe and play Archimedes. For me, I, if, as Eric, I would have just kept the Archimedes in my hand and just not cared about these little ink lore gains going on. I've seen, especially in preparation for the Ruby Amethyst mirror match, there has been that evolution over time, some bringing in evasive units just to be able to try and draw out some of that removal early or really focusing on the latter portion to set yourself up for success. So don't expect a lot of the focus to be on your questing at this yeah. point in time, just trying to get the advantage in terms of what is in your hand mm -hmm. and making sure to get the best use of those big heavy hitter haymakers later on. Yeah, now what I can say is there is a level of... Uh, you know, player maturity knowing that this is a grindy long match. So getting units on the, the board early is definitely helpful to, to start the lore counts. But from all of my experience, these games are going to be won on turns like 15, 16, and 17. So it, we're, we're going to be here for a, a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> try and build up that inkwell as much as possible mm -hmm. so that you can have access to those units later on. But yeah, I think the early game is where a lot of that teching comes in in terms of characters and where most of the shifting has happened in yeah. response to this particular deck. Yeah, most of the uh, most of the end game is pretty common. Uh, it's either am I playing the evasive or am I not? The other big differences are am I playing Mickey and Broom, which can play a pretty big deal. Um, you know, setting up the end game and things like that as well with multiple Brooms. Um, but oh, we've seen broom cycling. We've seen different layers of the list, uh, you know. In recent, it's hard to see uh, at glance what either of these players are doing so far. I haven't noticed a Mickey or a broom in anyone's hand. Um, I do believe it has starting to fall off a little bit because it's not necessary in any of the other matchups. I do like seeing the Gaston because it's not just something to consider in this particular matchup, but I feel like there are a lot of units in other decks that it can work into if you have a Cusco or something on the board. So. That cross application in multiple matchups is something to consider. I mean, four strength on a two cost character is really hard to replace. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just, you know, he does what he does. And even here, like, he just gets to trade into Rafiki, which is still an, uh, you know, a, a, an inkwell and advantage, a card advantage for resource costs and things like that. So, still a plus. Yeah, of course. Being that two cost, it means you don't quite have the same power as a Maui or something, right? Where you right. get that <laughs> rush ability right off the bat. But it is still a threat that you can put down on to the board. And Eric, we saw him using friends from the other side earlier, really trying to make sure that that hand is nice and full moving forward. Yeah, the big change here is obviously he was able to utilize his Rafiki to remove Archimedes and also draw cards uh, from the friends singing, whereas Carlos was forced to 
cast, uh, paying full, you know, full cost for friends, and then but we get is that double mirror in play there? We have a little bit of glare on that side, mm -hmm. um, so it looks like he has double mirror in play, which is from now on for the next couple of turns you might just see him, you know, just pay for and draw cards. And One just, of those. Just, just gain, just draw cards. <laughs> An uninkable that you're definitely happy with getting early, so that you can in later this on specifically. Yeah. Just try and slam those down, having multiple at your disposal. Because a lot of times, I feel like in these matchups, you'll reach kind of that lull point. You're still waiting for your Maleficence and things where you've had that excess of ink that you've built up. And that four that it costs to actually get that utility fully out of it doesn't feel as harsh as right. it does early on. Well, it also knows, in the, like in this matchup, there's no answer to it. Uh, mm -hmm. You're not worried about your opponent with a beast or anything like that. Yeah, like so little just, item removal in general yeah, in the first chapter. So like in this matchup, you're just like, yeah, I just get it in play. Now it's there, and I'll just use it you know, my freely for the rest of the game. Ooh, and we get pocket watch. So like, yep. yeah, this is really what this matchup is about. It's about who can win the item more and be most effective with their items. And you know, even like you know, these little lore gains here, that can be erased with one Aladdin now. Like, so that's why I said like the early game yep. tactics. They're just so minimal because it, it, it's so easily removed. Big Aladdin becomes so scary when you have that pocket watch down. Not only for being able to clear the board, but just having a lot more control over the lore in general and swinging that advantage in your direction. A decent body that's going to be able to clear off a lot of those early and kind of mid-game plays. But... I know that Carlos, I'm sure, is very aware of that and familiar with this matchup. So Something now, to consider moving forward. And we get to see now he, you know, he's playing the evasive route, and this Pongo is a is a threat uh, early on, yeah. and it's 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 a it's a real considering here. Like we're already going to see a dragon's fire come out, and that's that's what it warrants. But now that's where he also got the ink advantage gain here. So twice now he didn't he wasn't able to utilize the ink in any other way, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but getting that f uh, five cost removal for your four cost card, that's one less that he has in the deck. I think cards like that, to be honest, are some of the ones I'm most curious to track with these decks because we did see that surge in evasive units in the mirror match to try and draw out that removal. But when you're coming to a tournament like this, there are so many matchups that you have to consider. Mm -hmm. I do feel like I wonder your opinion on evasive units mm -hmm. just because of what they do draw out of the opponent, not just in direct challenging limitations, but also particular stickiness on the board. Yeah, I mean, they're... They're they're must answer cards, uh, and in, there's not an, like most ink combinations don't have a very good answer to them in general. They have to either use a card like spot removal from a dragon's fire or a smash, you know, for Pongo in this situation. But once you get into like the four health evasive units, like they're a lot harder to remove um, unless you have evasive units. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, that, that pocket watch might not be enough for most of his deck. You know, like Maui's and things like that can't answer a Pongo, which is, you know, it's warranted. True. It also helps when cards like Pongo are inkable as well. I feel like in Ruby Amethyst, that is one thing you struggle with. There are so many uninkable cards that you have to have in here. So offering yourself that versatility and being able to use the evasive units when you want to, or just fill up your inkwell as much as possible. But... This is kind of typical that we see in the early portion, not trying to flood the board in any capacity. Later on, you do have to prepare for that. Be prepared to eventually answer if you do over-index into mm -hmm. filling with characters. Yeah, I mean, last turn, he just literally drew a card. He was like, yeah, turn six. My opponent's not doing anything to pressure me whatsoever. I'm just going to draw a card. And then this is exactly a print point. It's like, I just play Ursula. I get to remove an ink from your, you know, you go to five. And then I draw a card. Now, you, now I have a two-eight in play. Like, deal with me. And... The 2-8, speaking of which, <laughs> Ursula here, 7 cost, uninkable. But I think recently in some of the tournament play, we've seen her presence also increase. I've always liked her. I think she's really great because of the card draw and lore denial. But we've seen four <laughs> copies of her in decks. Right. Well, now I, 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 I think in particular in this matchup, she shines. Because um, mm -hmm. she's just another card that, like, by herself, Maui doesn't remove her card for card. Uh, it needs, you know, you generally either need to waste multiple characters or you have to have your dragon fire, which we've seen, and we've already seen now two dragon fires. So everything that Carlos has played has been answered, but it's only turn eight, you know. It's only, so it's still very all or on, and we've already had to use two dragon fires on the threats, and mm. we're not threatening the game any which way with a Maleficent and an, an Archimedes, like. Those, those, are not gonna be, those aren't going to be the cards that are going to bring us home. <laughs> I'm sure Carlos is very much tallying how many of those threats have been used. Yeah. The dragon fires, the brief prepared. Of course, you do have to consider later on if they are running something like mm -hmm. brooms to be able to bring them back out of that discard. But yeah. still, for the time being, an important consideration. Yeah, so now we can see. like We rode the Archimedes there, which is exactly where these players should be. 
They each have mirrors in play, so I, I, for the rest of the game, I would expect to see Maleficence, Archimedes, and even friends on the other side being rode now. Uh, they just become resources because you already have an onboard draw that your opponent can answer. The Archimedes that we see, though, has actually been sticking for quite some yeah, time. Yeah, he's hanging out. He's hanging out. Eh, adds up a little bit over time, but I also feel like in Ruby Amethyst, it's kind of that mid-teens of lore is really the only thing you care about. Your mm -hmm. opponent, even in the mirror matchup, can get to that 10 in mirror, I feel like, but when going against kind of the more early dominant decks, you can let them get to that mid-teens era. So when you're looking over at Eric and what he's been able to build up in terms of lore, it's nothing for Carlos to really worry about <laughs> yet. No, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, once you get to 10 and you have the ability to play Pocket Watch and Aladdin in the same turn, mm -hmm. I mean, you can, like, his next turn can just completely erase uh, everything that really has been going on moving forward. And that's why, like, these early gains, like, they're nice to have to tic-tac, but th really the matchup just comes down to not being about it whatsoever. Finally, we see some of the bodies on Carlos's side build up a little bit. The queen is down, four, five, five cost inkable that you can exert to be able to draw a card. One of the reasons why we see Amethyst in so many decks is because of that direct card draw. But a decent body, too, mm -hmm. to be able to threaten. Are you a fan of running the queen in this deck? Um, I don't know. I've been in and out kind of, of a, it. Yeah. I've been in and out of it. Like, what I'm not a fan of is paying three to sing friends there when I could have just exerted my card mm -hmm. to draw a card and then, like, see where I went first. Like, because we're definitely going to... Like, we're going to exert that queen to draw a card, right? That's no, not going to... No. I, I don't you care. You rarely actually hit I don't hit care about her. Archimedes. I don't care about Maleficent, right? So, like, I would have definitely taken that play first, got a little more knowledge, and then went on with my turn. But at this point in the game, I find it really difficult to pay three to draw two if I could have just paid four to draw one and then inked uh, mm. this. Like, this Rafiki, it's nice to have again and, you know, taking those trades, but I would much rather be utilizing my resources a little bit better and then having more cards to ink. Like, again, if you have two mirrors on, on play... Uh, you, you should just be inking all of your draw spells. Like you just don't need them anymore. Yeah, I agree with you. And there. you need to get you need to get to like 15, 16 ink in this matchup to really be efficient. Yeah, you would you say you definitely in the mirror matchup have to get that ink well really yeah. really flush you, compared to others. I feel like sometimes you can stall out at nine in other matchups, but yeah. here you just got to keep going because you have to be able to have the best turn. Mm -hmm. uh, like in the end here, like where 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 this will end is whoever had the most ridiculous turn that you can think of, and it normally ends up like. Elsa into Aladdin, into Pocket Watch my Aladdin, into Ready my Aladdin with Shield to swing again. Like it, those how this is how these games end. So you need to just get to like these unbelievable numbers in Inkwell. And so you can really, really be able to throw down those big cost cards. Speaking <laughs> of which, Carlos has multiple be prepared mm -hmm. in his hands. Mm -hmm. There's I Elsa I as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think I believe Eric did already found his third Dragon's Fire. So he's at least he's ready to go with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, plenty of options. And we see a Jafar hand. Keeper of Secrets there, so that's a, a high strength character that just. What like, do you kind of think friends. of? Jafar. I, I, I think he's a totally unnecessary card in this that's, deck. <laughs> that seems to be the general <laughs> yeah. sentiment, but yeah. I feel like lately I have seen him somewhat. Maybe it's just people trying to figure things out, he, seeing if they can have more specific answers. He, he's, he does like have a specific answer, which is nice. So we see a double Rafiki here, which I assume will just run into the queen and get rid of her. But, like, that's a great trait, right? Like, my queen got to draw me a card and now take out six resources worth of characters. I'm okay with that. I'm, 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 I'm fine with those trades. It's always good when you can get that kind of rough trade in your yeah. favor. Two, two characters for one? Great. Yeah. Whatever the ink cost ended up being, as long as you're spending more to take my card off, would, then it's okay. Like, I would feel a lot worse if that was a Maui, but it wasn't. Mm. It was two Rafikis. And you're like, oh. Okay, like I can get behind these things. And in fact, we haven't seen any Maui's drawn. I haven't seen I any, feel. no. Oh, yeah, which is, that's one of the, my, in my opinion, one of the best Ruby cards in the game. Maui's phenomenal. You know, rush plus Reckless, six strength just to be able to slam that in, especially when you think of Elsa, right? Mm -hmm. How much willpower does she have? Mm -hmm. Six, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of the same thing here, this, this Maleficent play again. I... I I'm really against these cards. Like when once you have mirrors down in the mirror, you don't need any of these cards. Like so, like we just inked a Pongo. Mm. Pongo is a lore-threatening character for the rest of the game. Um, that like your opponent has to answer. And this Maui, what's this Maui going to do? Maui's going to remove this little Archimedes. And you're like, this, this, these lines of plays are uh, they're worrisome to me because like you're not setting yourself up to win the end game. And right now we just have you know two lore in play. 
we could have, instead of playing Maleficent, we, see how we have one unopened ink up there? Mm -hmm. Instead of playing the Maleficent, we could have just paid one more for Mirror and drew a card and used our resources more efficiently and had a card like Maleficent to ink rather than Pongo. It's true. The Maleficent friends on the other side combo is so core to this deck. But as early, you're saying, early, early on, once, early once on. Once you find the mirror in this matchup, you don't need any of these mm -hmm. other cards. Like they're just, they should just strictly be Inkwell. I wonder if the be prepared there seemed a little scarce. Yeah. I think I would have said it might be prepared. Like he he's threatening. Up. He's threatening two lore with nothing really else going on. I would just. I'd have been like, yeah, you can have those cards for a couple turns. <laughs> I would have yeah. just drawn two cards that turn with my mirrors. <laughs> Maybe feeling pretty good about what he's got in hand yeah. right now and thinking, okay, I can be willing to expel this, but that can come back to bite you. Yeah, I mean, like, be prepared is a pretty big card in the in there, and we really just we just played be prepared to remove two lore. Mm. So when you think about, and even he's only on three lore here, so he's not. He wasn't even like behind. So I think just gathering more resources that turn would have been a better turn for him. Not most efficient in that particular trade, but still at least kind he's of evens loaded. out the... He's, yeah, he's got a loaded hand, don't get me mm -hmm. wrong, but you can always get better. You can always draw more cards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Card draw, of course. So I think this will be the first time that there's like a true threat on Eric's side. Yes. Um, and he gets to go... You know, kick tick down the two, draw another card, and now just say, like, okay, I have this guy now. You have to figure this out. Like, how are you going to answer my Ursula? We were talking about Ursula and just the threat of having that eight willpower difficult to take off, unless you're running Ruby Amethyst, where you have a lot of the direct removal. Very typical target for that. The Ursula, the Elsa, mm -hmm. anyone with the A Elsa's ending, a little weaker, I guess. Because she only has that six health. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, yeah, Maui can trade into Elsa and live yep. to tell the tale, but Maui can't get rid of Ursula on its own. Yeah, poor lot to be able to do so. And that three lore, any character that has three lore points is so valuable. Yeah, there, there's a lot of really good ones. <laughs> yeah. I think definitely some favoring there. Obviously, there are some inks that really index into that. Emerald, for instance, mm -hmm. being all about these high lore point characters, but still some prevalence like Ursula across the other inks as well. But again, somewhat of a neutral state now with Ursula taken off for Carlos, but you still have that presence from Eric because of those magic mirrors that were thrown down and being able to catch up to what was a card advantage for Carlos for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's what mirror represents, in all honesty. Um, what do we have? We have uh, nine resources on Carlos' side, and then uh, and most of his resources are off screen, so I can't actually count up um, what, Eric, what, Car I'm sorry, what Carlos has here. Did they just flip the names on us? I feel like they flipped the names on us. Am I a little crazy? <laughs> First match of the day, Dan. We, we're we getting to know everyone, so I, we're getting to know them on stream, too. I think I've been calling Carlos Eric and Eric Carlos this whole time, guys. It's okay. <laughs> if, if anyone called it in stream, if they flipped anything, let us know. All right? Let us know in stream. <laughs> yeah, we do have chat open, so we can hang out with y'all in the Twitch chat as well. And, you know, I also enjoy we started off in such a lo-fi level as everything was getting started and now we're, we're ramping up into it dan yeah, i'm yeah. starting to feel just that build of wondering who's going to make the top 16 how are these different decks going to perform in this tournament because i feel like a lot of people have been looking at the previous ones and really basing a lot of their texts and stuff off of that but it's so fresh in this early portion of lorcana coming into existence that i'm still waiting for those kind of right hooks that you just don't expect well it's a big difference too because it's it's eight rounds you mm -hmm. know this being the largest event to date uh it's also the most rounds to date so you see a lot a lot of a lot of events are six rounds or some were reported at seven rounds but eight that's a, it, it adds another layer of, like, I need to be 6'2". I need to be, you know, 7'1". I need to, you know, I, I need to be in those levels. So when instead of having to be 4'2", you got to be 6'2". Mm. It makes a big difference. Like, that's two more wins that you got to find in an event to, 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 you know, secure a top 16 slot. It's so and true. I don't, I'm not even, I didn't run the numbers. Anymore. I don't even know that 6'2 is, like, a guarantee yet. Like, uh, like, like I don't know that all 6'2s right, will right. make top 16. So... Um, but it's that good aimer. If you get 6-2, six two, six two, you feel you're, pretty good. You're, what, you're, you're, you're in the running, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's where you want to be for sure. Anything, like, 5-3 will not make it. So, like, yeah. whoever gets the three losses today, that'll just, that'll be the end of their day. And think about getting that loss in the first match that you have. I don't know about you, but that always does make a difference when you accrue that loss, if you do at some point, because... 
whether you're feeling like you're on the back foot, you're going to have to anticipate some sort of tiebreaker. Now you feel like you're coming back from a deficit right. as opposed to being one of the ones to beat. It can do a lot for your mental and your competitive process. As you know, as somebody yeah. with a deep competitive <laughs> history, how important it is to keep that consistent mental throughout. Staying undefeated as long as possible is a very good feeling. Um, but it's also a, a, a weird feeling that if you're able to, like, let's say the player that goes 5-0. Well, if you go 5-0 and you lose three rounds, you're not in top 16. So mm -hmm. it's one of those mindsets also. So it's like sometimes you want to get the loss out of the way. Sometimes you're just like, I don't want a loss. Uh, so it, it, everyone's a little different. We'll see uh, whether Eric or Carlos get to walk out of this match <laughs> at the end of it with their heads held high. But as far as where we're at in this particular game, both of them have reached nine within their inkwell. So that's when Maleficent becomes an opportunity to not just get that big old character body on the board, but that removal for yeah. the opposition. Yeah, I mean, in this turn board state, I don't think I'd be playing Maleficent on anything yet. Like, we're not going to Maleficent nope. at Gaston, and we're not going to Maleficent at Maui. <laughs> so uh, I would be trying to, like, I really, like, this is where, like, so I... This is fine. We're, we're, we're moving ahead, but I don't think Maui's your best target. There's just better cards that you're, you're afraid of. Now, we have seen a good portion now. I don't think we've seen any uh, evasive characters um, off of Carlos' side of the board. So, mm -hmm. like, maybe the Maleficent just isn't as good, and, like, our targets are, are well. Now, I am. That's the first Broom I've seen. So, we now know that he has Broom um, in his deck. Is that all four Elsas in his hand? That oh hand is Oh, my stacked. gosh. All four Elsas. But no to Aladdins. Be prepared. Yeah. He's missing his Aladdins. But he's got, he's got, he's got the Where Elsa game. That's Aladdins? for sure. Now, see, this is the interesting two thing. Because now we can... Elsa doesn't trade very well into uh, Maleficent. But right. we could theoretically, like, use Elsa to, like, remove the Gaston if we wanted to. Because we have pocket watches. But we're definitely missing out on Aladdins. But at the same time, my opponent's on three lore here. I don't mind just paying four to draw another card in my deck to get to Aladdin. I, he, his his current board state's not threatening the game in any which way. So this is a good turn. This is just like, you know what? I, I don't have the answers. I need to find them. How do I do that? I'll just draw some cards. And even like playing a, a broom here is probably okay. Um, I mean, the second pocket watch is also fine. Like we're just gonna like he is absolutely looking towards setting up this gigantic mm -hmm. wombo combo turn. And even if it all all it's gonna take for him is to really just find Aladdin at this point. Yeah, it's true. And uh, Carlos does have that buffer of 10 lore already built up compared to mm -hmm. Eric's three. That's more about the fact that Eric will have to take more time before yeah. he's actually threatening to close out this game. So Carlos can take that pace a bit slower. Right. So like the weirdest thing in this game for me is like I just paid nine for this awesome character. Yeah. But it only gets me two points of life. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it, in, in a lot of games and like, you know, uh, games you can compare to you're like, oh, I played this nine character and it has nine strength and it's going to get me nine damage. That's not how lore kind of works. The clock is much different. So when you pay nine for this character, you're like, oh, it only gets me two lore. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes me ten turns to win the game. It's it's a different clock. So the, the opponent that's ahead at this point is like, yeah, I have three. I have like he can he could take three turns with this character. It's fine. I can see the perspective of when Eric put down the Maleficent, where if you're really indexing into the control aspect of just trying to make sure that that board is in your favor, mm -hmm. sure. But just like you're saying, Carlos can afford to slow things yeah. down as much as he absolutely wants to. Why would I put something out just to get dragon fired right. or be prepared when I have this good buffer working for me? And you can see that response right before your eyes. Well, a key word too is like, your opponent can't do anything on your turn. So yeah. since I can't do anything on your turn, then you can just easily set up. The whole point of this matchup for them is like just setting up this ridiculous wombo combo turn and having the best one. So that's why you can just afford to be like, yeah, you can you can take two, three more turns of gaining two Lord Maleficent. I'm just going to gather all the resources, get my inkwell up, and then I'm going to have the best turn ever. Because yeah. honestly, one Aladdin uh, in this game state, once we get to the resources, can take away f basically effectively two turns of the Maleficent lures. And so much of Aladdin's strength isn't just because of that utility, but as you pointed out when comparing the strength and willpower, five is always a breaking point, yeah. whether it's Maleficent or you think of Rapunzel over in Amber, that for strength of someone like Elsa just narrowly missing out, you feel like you have to double the resources you put into that removal sometimes. So Aladdin would be able to make a big difference for Carlos, who's already sitting pretty right now. Double stopwatches, has the magic mirror for that additional draw. Of course, offset by the multiple magic mirrors from Eric, but at this point, you're looking to try to get to those Wombo combos ahead of your opponent, and we'll see who can come out on top. 
Yeah, see, like, I'm not a huge fan of the, the, the Archimedes here. Most people ink it, at this it, point. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, what is, what, that card doesn't do anything for you. I don't even, I didn't get to see what he just inked there, but I guarantee you it's a better card than Archimedes <laughs> <laughs> in this game state. I think, I'm trying to get sneak peeks whenever we get the top of, the top view. Yeah. I do think I saw a befuddle, uh, uh -huh. in, so maybe it was up, but I don't know if it was still in hand, so potentially multiple low-cost cards. But that being said, I think to your point, you can just wait and then yeah. make sure that you have Archimedes to be able to ink the next time yeah. around. I mean, like even like in some weird world where the Archimedes with Rush was going to matter, I'd like it better then, but we couldn't even utilize it for that this turn. So, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, we got a very inquisitive owl already here <laughs> once again for Carlos. Maybe he's feeling nostalgic about the early part of the match where there was one Archimedes that he's just like, got to well, stick around. This one got me four lures. So yeah. We're going to get this other one. <laughs> See if I can do it again. I mean, there is something to be said about the fact that I know you don't want to use any of your hard removal for such a, at this point in the match, a silly little character. So. You know. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it, it, I guess if it takes two lore away from because of the Maleficent mm -hmm. instead of the Kastan, but at this point, if I'm Eric, I'm probably okay with just trading Kastan for whatever is there. Yeah, it looks like he still had the befuddle in his hand as well. Really has a lot of options if you're looking from Carlos's side to be able to answer anything that Eric ends up throwing down right now, choosing to quest. To gain the lore, and then he is going to ready it with shield. Shield of Which Virtue. Is, I mean, it's it, it's a slow race, mm -hmm. and technically, it's a it's a slower race than the Maleficent, um, on average. But when you ha when you're up and you can afford, what are we gonna just? Well, well, we have five left, four, so we're just gonna draw another card here, and that's fine. Like this is like he's still ahead in the game. He still has answers. Um, he picked up a Maui there, but so we have an Inkwell count here. So we definitely need to still be inking every turn. Yep, we're at 12 for Carlos and 9 ink in the inkwell for Eric. So at one point they had kind of stabilized and were matching each other, but Carlos did spend some time to build up his resources rather than actually flooding in any sort of way. Yeah, so like here, next turn would have been great if we were able to find our way to 14 already because then we could just Elsa. Mm. And Oh, actually, a 13 work. No, no, it doesn't. No, 13 does work. So we can play Elsa, and then since Maui has Rush, so now this Maleficent will get removed and it won't need... But I also have the argument that you don't even need the Maui at this point either, and I would probably just be in Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like Maui, because of the fact that you get him a bit earlier than someone typical of that level of strength, mm -hmm. because of the inability to quest, has kind of that mid-game potency, yeah. but later on not so much. So the good news is we can take back everything I just said, and now I will play the Elsa to tap down the Aladdin, and then I'll just Maui the Aladdin and like, mm -hmm. really punish my opponent for playing Aladdin in an open board like that. Yeah. Because that, that's like, he is one of the key factors of this matchup. Uh, the, the four point yeah. swings are just so good, and especially where we are in game state now. Like, I would be completely comfortable just going Elsa Maui and removing that threat mm -hmm. from the game and almost, you know, really kind of forcing my opponent to go, okay, well, now I have another three lore Elsa with a shield that you have to figure out also. I do want to look at Eric's deck. I'm curious. We haven't seen any stopwatches from Eric, I don't believe, Not yet. right? Because that is one thing right now when you see the Aladdin slammed down, you're thinking that he needs to be able to stick to offer the true threat that he can when challenging. But because there's no combination with that rush capability, that's why Carlos would be able to do something like exert through an Elsa and follow up with a Maui or another form of removal. In this case, we got that clear board, baby. Yeah. Back to ground zero as Which we see time and time again in this match. <laughs> yeah, um, so Eric, it does not look like he has pocket watch. All right. So that would that be why we haven't seen yet. <laughs> he does have the <laughs> Ursula's Cauldron and yep. I feel there. Shields in my uh, in mirrors, yeah. Yeah, when you have the magic mirrors, it feels like Ursula's cauldron and having the rush of the stopwatch are kind of the trade out. Yeah, ones. for me, playing this deck, um, I actually ended up not really liking cauldron too much. I felt like it was only very good if I was able to get it early, and it was only good mm -hmm. in like control mirrors because I didn't want to play it early against aggros. Right. So I, I ended up just not being a very big fan of the card in general on this list. Yeah. And being uninkable where the pocket watch does have right, that like, option. Right, at the very least, so. like, you can ink your pocket Now, it's really tough to ink pocket watch, but you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, is, it is an option of the card. <laughs> I feel like 
I see it inked most not in the mirror match. When you're going <laughs> against someone where you're not going to get to your Aladdins anyways, yeah. if it's a faster tempo game, right. then it's okay to ink. But right. here you're usually holding on to it to add that extra level of utility. Gosh, we've seen so many Archimedes yeah. from Carlos. Yeah, I just I, we, we, we've been in the ink well too. But mm -hmm. as I said, it's, it's this weird game, honestly, where he can just take eight turns uh, with shield and say, answer me. Um, like it, it, It's crazy to say that that's like a winning line, but mm -hmm. it, 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 it is saying like, hey, you, can, you have to answer me. Shield of Virtue just offers so much. Not only can you get it down early if you do draw into it, not only can you get that additional use, of course you can't quest, but of your characters, but just that protect protective capability, forcing your opponent to use something other than a direct challenge when yeah. you get to this point of having excess in your ink. Well, 14 right now, that means that those tools that you've been building up through this itemization across this entire game are really going to pay off. Yeah, like it's one of the uh, uh, honest, like, conversations that I've had with the team among um, you know in general is that this is this landscape of a deck when you really like put it down it's hard as a designer to look and say this is how this deck is going to end up playing like when you look at this deck you don't think like oh the mirrors the pocket watches and the shields at first mm -hmm. and then when you start playing the deck and you start learning the deck you're like wow these are like they're key roles yeah. in this deck like they're very invaluable uh, tools to be used and then you look at a game like this you're like this is a control deck that has six items in play you know like it's crazy to think of it like that and it's it's one of those things that i would definitely be curious of the designers like did you guys expect this like is this the type of game you expected players to play with like i'm playing my control deck but i got mm -hmm. you know six uh, possible four different items that i can be playing in this list I'm expecting as we see further chapters unravel or reveal over time that we'll get some more of that item removal. Right now it's just so limited, so you can build up so easily. <laughs> I just had this incredible picture in my mind of just dragon fire just completely annihilating Archimedes there. Fringing <laughs> the just, feathers. Just, <laughs> it's just evaporating into thin air, guys. <laughs> But, you know, it's Disney, so sparkles around, yeah, yeah, you know, a little smile it, on the exit. It disney it up, but that bird just got torched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the bird did get a lot of use, actually. As much as we were kind of questioning the yeah. choice to play multiple Archimedes, it's it's okay. We got 13 lore for Carlos. Eric just stopped inking at some point. Yeah. Where 9, we were talking about that being yeah. such a stopping point in other matchups. Well, this is the problem with this Maui, right? Like, this mm -hmm. Maui just has not done anything. Uh, it's been on, in play for, like, four turns, and it's not done anything. And that's the problem because of S.H.I.E.L.D., Maui is not very good in this matchup. Mm. And that's why Maui is another card that's like very much an inkable card. And we've seen for four or five turns now, Carlos has just said, all right, I'll lure for one and then ready my card, and your Maui is just going to hang out, just be the hero to all. You know, <laughs> you know what uh, What guilty pleasure okay. I have now have because of you? Okay, okay. How you just put the imagery in my mind of <laughs> Maleficent just Just torture the bird? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm just thinking about each unit and what would that look like? Like Maui, is his skirt, would that get the fringe yeah. first? Oh, the embers yeah. kind of glowing around? Well, you kind know. of like the that ink, though, right? He's ink, like, I'm fine. The ink on him might just fight it off. It's fine. Oh, yeah. that's true. That's true. Is the ink flammable or is it protective? We protective. need to know these things. He's a demigod. <laughs> he's, he's, he's burn proof. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Big vocals on him. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Strong in many, hey, many ways. That's the rock, you know? That's yeah. fine. <laughs> Who doesn't love the rock? Well, I say that and someone's going to come out of the woodwork. Well, uh, actually. Let us know in the chat. If you don't like the rock, let us know in the chat. Right? <laughs> I'm curious. I love the rock. Got, I do too. I'm a wrestling fan, though. It's unfair. Mm. <laughs> a friend of mine was uh, working on his show for a while and just talked. It's so great when you can hear somebody is just as nice mm -hmm. behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. as they appear to be in person. So that is our rock rant, there if you're go. wondering, We're, for yeah. the wrestling it, fans it, it out it there. It all started with Maui. It's fine. Yep, yep. Maui. It's just That's the link. Just blame it. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, we found a use for Maui, so that's good. Nice, <laughs> nice. And we did know kind of earlier, which feels like forever ago in yeah, this particular matchup, how much Eric has been prioritizing using the draw on things like Friends on the Other Side as opposed to inking and even when in that mid game, keeping things like Maleficent around to be able to do so, just trying to outpace Carlos as much as possible right. and get into those units. Right. But we'll see. This is also. This is. I mean, like I said, this is where we were going to be yeah. eventually. We were just. We just had to get here. Items everywhere. <laughs> so now, like you know, Aladdin here is just a, a two point lore trade, and it's off the board. So you're not worried about your opponent's Aladdin. However, with my opponent not playing Pocket Watch, I feel 
I feel really good about this game if I'm Carlos. Mm -hmm. Like, I have the item water. I have now, like, this is just another two lore I'm going to gain here. It doesn't matter that my Aladdin's going to go away because mm -hmm. I just I get to go to 15, and now I'm just going to hang out. And now I can honestly, with, like, he has four Elsas in his hand. He could just play an Elsa every turn and just say, you have to answer my Elsa or the game is going to be over. And that's where that patience comes in for Carlos. He was pretty aggressive with some of the dragon fires early on, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with the evasive units that Eric was throwing down. But being so aware of the multiple forms of utility and the heavy hitters he has was looking and seeing, I'm getting all these Elsas right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to save them as much as I possibly can and be able to put a quick stop to anything that Eric does decide to yeah. move forward with. We just saw the classic Aladdin plus the pocket watch combo yeah. to get that Maui off the board, start stabilizing the lore even more it was previously 9 to 13 mm -hmm. now that deficit when yeah. you're in that 7 spot compared to 15 feels like a much wider gap for you to overcome yeah four, four point swing is huge guys today is eight rounds uh, the event will be eight rounds so yeah uh, four point swings are huge and especially mm -hmm. in a control mirror because that's that, that's a lot of ground like I said those those couple turns where it was just Maleficent lore game for two well take two of them away now now we got the brooms coming into play I have some I would say memories, but they feel more like nightmares come to mind <laughs> when thinking of broom cycling. Do you have any particular experience yeah, with I, I the just, travesty that can happen? I, my, my, my games end long before broom loops. Yeah. I, 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 I'm very good at just telling like where the game is going to go, mm -hmm. and if I don't feel that I'm in the game, I'm out of the game. I'm also, I don't have Mickey Broom in my, in my Ruby Amethyst list. I will just, I don't want to ever play a 55 minute game one. Yeah. I'm just, I'm not in that world. <laughs> How do you feel about when people play just brooms compared to the Mickey broom combo? I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I, 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 I don't think, I don't think it's wrong to play Mickey broom at all. Mm -hmm. I just, for me, not my style. Don't want to play that game. Just want to, just want to like, even in that last turn. So that last, he, I think he spent his extra resources. He still has two resources up. So he spent extra resources to draw a card and play broom. I would have just played the Elsa. And mm -hmm. it's like, okay, here's my Elsa, here's my three lore card, I have a shield, I can protect it. You have to find answers to this. Like and and it's okay if your opponent does because you just have more Elsas. <laughs> yeah, when you have that many Elsas, yeah, you can even, get more liberal. Even in this case, right? Like, all right, so my opponent played Elsa, he I think only has four resources left over. Maybe right? No, three lore resources. So even if he had Elsa, he couldn't even follow up with a way to remove your Elsa and you have shield. So you're just like, all right, I'm just still gonna gain three lore next turn. I'm gonna go to eighteen. Where now it's like, okay, I, I gain three and I go, you know, I, I get to game one with my broom, but that's a five turn clock. The Elsa represents a two turn, a two, mm -hmm. a two turn clock. Now you're just giving your opponent more times to, to find answers. Yeah, and and this is also the big thing about time, right? Mm -hmm. Like when we're playing for now, granted, you're ahead, so your time is in your favor since right. you're ahead. But it's still knowing that like, this game has to end. I have to play a game two. I don't want to make sure like I get burnt out early and things like that, but. For me, I just I would much rather be pressuring the game at this point and saying, okay, I'm at a position where you have to answer this and you don't have pocket watch. And since you don't have pocket watches, your answers are even less. Even thinking in the typical progression of a competitive day like today, where you're taking a bit more time on your turns in the earlier matches, you're more into the groove by the end, it feels almost like you get a bit more punished if you run into this mirror match earlier in the day as opposed to later because of <laughs> that time stress. consideration. It's a stress level, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even whether you're seasoned or it's your first event, there is still that getting into a groove, yeah. right? New venue, a uh, lot. I mean, there's plenty, plenty of research and all the things that you can talk about when it's that competitive mindset, but it does have an impact and right now when you feel that time winding down and you're still in the first game of the best of three mm -hmm. then that can put pressure on someone like eric who's trying to catch up right well the best thing the, the the real thing too is if let's just say this game were to end in a draw uh because of the placement bracket now all of these players that get a draw in round one basically put themselves in a bracket with each other because mm -hmm. the way pairing works so it almost like separates the tournament into two tournaments yo i feel like the draws are most likely going to happen from this mirror match right so if you yeah. all the draws it that can get absolutely happen next to it can absolutely other, happen 100%. they just keep drawing yeah it, it was one of the weird things we were talking about um before the event was just like it, let's just say there's 10 tables that go to a draw well yeah. those 20 players are playing each other for the rest of the day so it literally does just create a second tournament almost in a way. It's one of my favorite things about when any type of game first comes through, and this is still really you know, only been around a few months, there's a few tournaments to pull from, is trying to set expectations 
in the way things play out in terms of the frequency of draws, uh, how fast matches tend to be. Because there's always that one round that just kind of kills everybody yeah. that really throws you for a loop. Oh, wow, these decks are always going to be uh, strung out. And we're starting to really see that get solidified now that we have had a couple of tournaments to refer to, including our PPG Lorcana OP Tour Miami that we have this weekend that will also offer a blueprint for those looking to learn something about the competitive landscape. Yeah, and there's still a lot of time left in Chapter 1. I mean, we mm -hmm. have three or four weeks worth of tournaments before Chapter 2 comes out, so there's still plenty of more events to you know, happen from this and learn from this for what it's worth. Again, largest tournament there is to date. And when you start thinking about that and seeing the top 16 decks and things like that, it's, it's a lot of data to really understand. Speaking of which, we'll talk about it later, I'm sure, but some places that you can expect PPG management, your one-stop shop for organized play to be, because this is not the end of the road for 2023 for Lorcana and PPG, that's for sure. Mm -mm. But all right, as more we, to come. Yeah, more to come. <laughs> da, 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 soon, TM. I don't know. Are you in on that meme? I can't ever tell if that's just a niche meme that I think of from other scenes or if that's a uh, known soon, TM. Mm, no, sorry. It's uh, <laughs> It just refers to when devs and games say something is coming soon. soon to come. But it's yeah. very vague, yeah, yeah, so yeah, soon yeah. could be a month later just or the, many months later. Yeah, yeah. So right now we're, we're holding out on the intel, <laughs> so it's soon TM. But we'll, we'll add some clarification later not on. Not that they're not going to all stay tuned anyway. Let's be honest. There's yes. currently like 165 guys in chat. And thank you guys so much for guys and gals and everyone around to join us for this wonderful event today. Yes, we appreciate you coming and hanging out. I'm sure some people are still waking up too. We're on East Coast here, but maybe some Pacific risers. I live here. Here, so it's fine for me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're an this East Coaster in too zone. now, so you get it. Yeah, I feel like it took me a bit to transition from Pacific oh, Coast uh, and now I'm oh, central yeah, yeah, yeah. on that weird borderline yeah. where it feels like East, but it's not quite. Yeah. So, Like as a sports fan, I wish I lived on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's really tough to watch your team like play until midnight. <laughs> any kind of releases or yeah, yeah anything. Any it, any it. like, I gotta wait till three in the morning. <laughs> Seriously, 9 p.m. being the midnight release for everything is such a game changer. You know, myself drinking my sleepy tea at 9 and thinking, okay, I still get a good night's sleep and get to learn everything that I wanted to. But alas, we didn't have to worry about any midnight releases here. Yeah. We got a bright and early to come and bring you the first round of our Swiss bracket here today. I will say uh, in the room, unlike our current game that we are enjoying uh most of them are standing up already so <laughs> i know i saw that i was thinking there are matches that are already yeah, done yeah so we're in game one still uh we have a 15 to 6 lower count uh, inkwell's up to 18 so we're at that end game mode now where mm -hmm. honestly this game could end in, in in one turn one aladdin now has the ability to almost end this game specifically now with ursula just able to pick up three lore here go to 18 in my humble opinion, if I'm looking at the clock, if I were Eric, I would be conceding because yeah. I need to be able to win game two to even attempt at, at, at this at a draw because obviously a draw is it's not as good as a win, but it's better than a loss. So when you're at 15 lore on the side of Carlos in this case, it is just a couple of big characters away from being able to finish things off. Ursula with three lore points, you know, if there's an Elsa mm -hmm. somewhere. So if Eric can't keep pace with removal and ensuring that Carlos isn't able to quest, right, so then it's done. Right. So this is now we're, we're at, okay, so we are going to sing Be Prepared here, which is mm -hmm. a safety valve. But now we're at that point where... Almost anything, let's just say, all right, so Ursula's, Ursula's a, a almost anything, right? I, yeah. I caught myself right away. Ursula's the one card that Aladdin, Aladdin can't get rid of by itself. Uh, but we are in that point where we can very easily just play, we have 16 or 19 mm -hmm. now, right? 19 ink. So we have the Elsa, Aladdin, Pocket Watch, Shield combination. Um, so you actually could Aladdin this Ursula uh, by going into it twice with Aladdin, which we very well might see happening this turn. I think so, and you can see that timer come up at the bottom of the screen as well. Just over six minutes left yeah. for this to be played out. Yeah. So we're talking about a 45-minute game one uh, to yeah. this point. Yeah. yeah. That's tough. That that is really tough. And in terms of just kind of setting yourself up from here, if you do end so in that now draw. So now you're now you're playing this mode where you're like, I just have to prevent my opponent from winning. Yeah. Which is a really weird game state. Um, you know, for me, I I like I would rather players play to win than play to draw, if that makes sense. It's kind of a variation of the mantra: you should play to 
always play to win and not play to not lose. Right, right. Yeah. And in this game, it's it the rule book is just set to play to not die. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not a, I'm just not a particular fan of like games ending that way, um, specifically in long card game tournaments. Because now it, it, a draw in eight one and a draw in round one, it, it's it's not a death sentence, but it's it's almost as bad as a loss. It shows why it's important to think proactively beyond the match that you are currently playing right. because the overall landscape of how you do in Swiss will determine whether you make that top 16 and you're putting yourself on such a back foot if you're unable to close things out here. I want to know how many Aladdins Carlos has because my man, he cannot find them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you would think with the pocket watches there would be plenty. If you can't hear it, everyone, we're listening to the announcements within the venue. He's got four of them. Where are they? Maybe he inked some early. Um, for, from our point of view, a lot of the stuff that was inked, it was uh, kind of shown face up to his opponent and then put down, so we couldn't really track right, any yeah. of those things. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make a statement to the table judge, hopefully that players can put their cards face down on the ink so we, we can better track those things. Makes sense. We're allowed to take notes. Yes, the players that's true. are not. The players are not allowed to take notes, but we're allowed to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate Eric and Carlos being considerate to their opponent, <laughs> giving them that nice little flat there, but that shows they're not too worried about those that are casting, right? They're thinking, I'm very focused on the game. Yeah. But we'll see. Another Elsa down for Eric. We are in that kind of repeat territory of characters, like all the big bodies. I like the time goes a blinking. I know. I respect that. <laughs> Form is color change in everything. Although I, I just had like flashbacks of Super Smash Brothers where it's just like yelling at me with 10 seconds left or something. <laughs> I want to see it just get super fast by the end. Yeah. Like by the <laughs> little text get, boxes coming like up on the screen. It just like slowly gets bigger or something. Whatever. Yeah. Just have fun with it, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually that's all that chat sees. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if I didn't know how to count before, you know, I really <laughs> do know now. All right, so there's our Elsa follow-up. Um, and this, so we're at 14 more now, but Elsa still represents two turns. So we do have a Mickey Mouse. Uh, so we, we, we can start this fun loop game. Uh, ironically, I don't know how many resources are left here, but <laughs> he, he could ironically run uh, three brooms into Elsa. Oh, no, he only has two pocket watches, but that would be fun, right? Mm. If we just watch this crazy repeat of pocket watch broom three times, like, get him, broom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sweep him up. <laughs> Won't be able to sweep the round because <laughs> of the state of the game, but, yeah, you can still still have fun. Yeah, so there we go there. So we steal it once. He gets it back for one. He can play it again, put another card back in his deck. He's I doing it very fast because of time, mm -hmm. which I totally respect. I feel like there's two directions. We would either have to get more sinister as the clock goes down, <laughs> or you become an auctioneer and just talk faster. They start playing faster, you're trying to match their pace. But I, It's <laughs> funny, because I think you just do it subconsciously, but you do, like, you all of a sudden you hear there's a clock. Yeah. Like, you all of a sudden you hear it, and you're like, oh, my God, i got to play faster. And it's like one of those things, it's like, well, if you just took five seconds off every turn. Yeah. We wouldn't be in this position. <laughs> Even in terms of your opponent's pacing can affect your own pacing oh, absolutely. all the time. Yeah. You see they're done with their mulligan, yeah. you think, oh, well, now I need to speed it up as well. So. Yeah, like I like to think I'm a pretty fast player on most turns, and then there's always like that one crucial turn where I'm like, okay, mm. I need to go to the tank. <laughs> Do you feel that being a fast player is also an intimidation tactic for those uh, that... Uh, I, I I don't I mean I, I could see it maybe even if not intentional maybe yeah there's I, like, I, I don't think like me playing fast is intentionally trying to be right, intimidating right. but I could see players being intimidated by it mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah the intentionality doesn't necessarily yeah. determine the effect like, of I, like, it, like right? I'm not doing yeah. this by intent like right, I just, but that's just like that was just like how players some certain players play the game. It's one of the areas where I get really nerdy is just competitive culture because mm -hmm. after talking to so many pro players over the years and thinking about the rituals, the <laughs> actual in-game experience, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. there's a lot that goes into it. And that's one thing that I love about venues like this where you see the clashing of those that have been playing consistently since right. Lorcana came up, those that are trying to give it a go. Uh, I know that, were you perusing the decks when they came through at oh, all? Yeah. Or, I was yeah. monitoring it literally the last three days. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see how many three days. of the beefy decks were going to come through yeah. if anyone was coming through with something creative will, or the budget decks with yeah, the I'll, I'll definitely nerd out with some stats in a couple rounds mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when I when I when I leave the stream for a round or, or a round or so well I'll come back with all the stats 
<laughs> if you missed it at the top, we actually have three casters total today. The voices you hear, I'm Gabby. We've got Dan by my side, Dan Arnold, and then Free is hanging around and will be hopping on for the next match. So we'll be rotating through. You'll hear our three voices throughout the entirety of today and tomorrow. All right, we need to get really crazy. It's 30 seconds oh left. Oh, my gosh. It's 30 but this seconds. Is, so this is where I said earlier, a couple, like, like, this was like five turns, six turns ago. Have we just played Elsa six turns ago and mm -hmm. just said, answer my Elsa or lose the game? We would have never gotten to this point. I believe a lot of players overthink this position and they're trying to like hedge their bets and get all these, di like sometimes you just gotta play your card and say beat me yeah. or stop me. And that I, I think this deck is very like not that type of deck, mm -hmm. but eventually you need to get to that point in like the game state where you're like, you need to answer this or I win the game. And for the last three turns, all we've done is cycled with like with like brooms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like we might not have even had to get to this point in game state had I just played Elsa's. I think that's when when you're kind of looking at the play style of a deck, I always feel like there's the on paper play, right? If you were to look at the strategy, not thinking about the opponent, not considering anything, you know which way that you're going to play things out, what you're going to ink, what you're going to not. But the matchup itself will force you to deter from that and technically choose what are not optimal plays generally, but optimal in this matchup. What you are saying specifically, yeah. it's not typically that style of throwing yeah. something down, but maybe that was a play here well, as like, we are know, 41 like, seconds in overtime. Right, and this also comes back to like how many cards that I ink that could have won me the game mm -hmm. instead of inking Maleficent, instead of inking Friends on the other side, instead of inking Maui. You know, like these cards that are just aren't moving, even Archimedes, we saw several Archimedes being played. Like, rather than playing these cards, if they were the inkwell and the cards that were going to win me the game be in my hand, now we just got an Aladdin here, which is huge. But even where we are in turns, uh, I'm not, I didn't get a, a, a specific thing if we got extra time. I don't think we did. So if we're in turns, we now have to find six lore in three turns. And honestly, that's not an easy feat. Uh, no. at all because Carlos next turn can just go I'm going to play be prepared Yep. and now you have one turn to get these to get this lore you know and very much worth noting that you are tracking how many be prepared mm -hmm. how many of these yeah. types of removal come through and there are still some available and both Carlos and Eric are aware of that which I think there's two of them in Carlos hands not that I think he's planning on playing one anytime soon mm -hmm. Well, you're seeing the broom doesn't want to <laughs> get be prepared away. And Carlos is the one that's building up right now, has the Elsa and the Mickey Mouse down, just traded broom for so, broom. Right, so he'll probably play one more broom here. Mm -hmm. um, and now this is threatening game. So this is threatening six lore, uh, which would inevitably be game. Which, But even, you know, an Ursula turns that off. Uh, obviously, be prepared just resets the game and says, okay, and now you... you there, there's, no, there's no way that... If we play Be Prepared next turn, he can gain six lore two turns from now. Um, so it, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for this game to not end in a draw, unfortunately. Even though Eric and Carlos have been trying their darndest to end it in one's favor, yep. there is that kind of point of no return, too. I feel like if you don't draw at some point, you feel like you have to keep going. You kind of missed your window, and then it's kind of, ah, do I end it here? Yeah. Try and get the win? Yeah. Or... Yeah, the consequences. It's, it, it's a tough setting. Um, personally, this is one of the, like, if I were coming to this event th and I was going to play Ruby Amethyst, this would have been my most play-tested matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, just because like, I know how grindy these are. I know how bad they can get. Um, and when you looked at it this way, honestly, if I was on Eric's side, and I like, this is exactly what, what I assume is going to happen here. Uh, so we're going to go and we're just going to remove everything. But like now, like I look at my opponent's board, and unfortunately, what do we have? Eight items over there. They don't really do anything anymore. Yep. Like, they don't mean anything. Um, and now it's just, it's up to Carlos to honestly flood the board and hope that his opponent just doesn't have another be prepared for his only chance to win the game. But even, like, an Elsa next turn, well, actually, Elsa doesn't good, isn't actually good enough because of double, um, double shield. But playing the broom here is actually, it actually might help um, because, uh, because of the whole, I can play Elsa and do my Aladdin and gain two lore off that way. Uh, and the broom's not really doing anything. You're not going to, like, this game is going to end by him decking out at this point. So him playing a character at all that dies and uh, that's banished to Aladdin, I, it's one of those where it's like, you should be playing so your opponent just can't beat you. Yep. You just don't need that card right now. Having to change the tactic as yeah, we are. Yeah, and, and it's difficult to, 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 to adapt on the fly if you don't know the mirror well enough. Um, and it does look like he's, I don't know where he is. I guess he's out of cards in his deck. Mm -hmm. I think. 
Yeah, it's tracking. He has brooms. Like, he has brooms. I know that much. Yeah. So not quite forced to mill just yet with the brooms available. Yeah, like there's available. a broom right there. So yeah. the, the game's not going to end on that. I do wonder what we'll be I, doing I, competitively in terms of right now. Yeah. Everyone's getting geared up for the... Yeah. I think you just end... A, a, yeah. Like, the way this is, you just it's just going to end in a draw. Like, it's really just about him... I'm going to draw a card next turn, and I'm not going to lose the game. There's mm -hmm. no way you can gain 12 lore to beat me. There's no way I can right. gain 6 lore to beat you. So, I mean, he's going to try. He's going to put... What do we have? Uh, like, he can play another Mickey Mouse here and then play an Elsa uh, and represent six again. He's going to have one more turn. Uh, but any removal card, any Ursula, um, you know, any of those things is, is going to be enough to take it off the board. And Elsa technically is, is good enough to take to take the other broom off the board, which would still only put him in 19 lore. So um, it's going to be really tough here to for this to not end. I didn't see if there was another Aladdin in Carlos's hand. That would be mm -hmm. like the one give or take factor. Right. And the judge is just trying to keep everything clean here and make sure all the ink's being tapped uh, correctly. Mm -hmm. Definitely something to track. Mm -hmm. Albert, our judge. Albert. Shout out. Shout out to Judge Albert. Yeah. You got to shout out everyone that's putting in the yeah, hard the work for the events. Yeah, the production team put in a lot of work. Um, I'll definitely post some pictures later for everybody to see. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a really nice hall, really nice room, really nice setting. Mm. What a way to kick things off and with Miami's this. Miami's beautiful. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is your first time to Miami? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> come on. Prof <laughs> professional <laughs> card gamer? Come on. Yeah. No. Got yeah, me. that's true. That's true. There, <laughs> there are a got lot of us out here. Are you somebody that makes? I mean, you did get here earlier, and you I said that here, your wife is I exploring. Do you, you yeah. explore the places where yeah, you're visiting? Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. We have to. But that's the that's the play. As Eric and Carlos are still looking for the play yeah, <laughs> in yeah. this particular match, we were talking about the drawbacks mm -hmm. of the draw. But it is still better than picking up that L in your first yeah, round, which is like why I said, it's you know it, it, it's tough because obviously the draws later are the draws that you make to guarantee yourself in the top cuts, uh, which is you're just already being removed from that equation. And you know I don't know how many draws we're going to end up having. There are definitely still some tables still playing. Uh, but you're now you're in a bracket with everybody else uh, with, with, with with that draw, which means you also remove yourself from matchups and the likeliness of other draws where, unfortunately, this particular mirror match. Um, so then you're just you're looking to do this over again next round, which definitely not where anybody wants to be. Yeah, when looking at the summary of the submissions, there are plenty of Ruby Amethyst decks as expected. I, I so. do think it was ended up. The second most played deck. Mm -hmm. I believe Amber Steel is going to run away yeah. with it and be the most played deck in the event. I think there was over 50 of them registered uh, for 214 players. So, I know that that matchup in particular has been very common. The yeah. Amber Steel into Ruby yeah. Amethyst. Two best decks for sure. Yeah, performing uh, very well in previous tournaments. Two most consistent decks will be the more fair and accurate statement that I'm going to mm -hmm. make. <laughs> and Amber Steel, in terms of speaking of consistency, there are different variants that you yep. can bring. So, whereas Ruby Amethyst, yes, there's variants, but the actual core of the heavy hitting portion of the deck is the same. It, it does alter when it comes to the rest. So, but we set up the play to win the game, but Dragon's mm -hmm. Fire just, like, legitimately right now, I would not play another card. I mean, you could play Ursula. It's, like, the only other card. I mean, that one's, like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but you, we didn't even have to. Like, we didn't even have to play that because even Double Shield here still readies this twice. Um, now, ironically, the numbers work out to 19 even at best. So there's no way to, to really get away with this unless we had a third shield. But there's no way he's going to gain six lower this turn. Mm -mm. Uh, at least I'm pretty confident. <laughs> yeah. uh, not with Elsa. But I, we didn't even have to play Elsa. And there was there's no way for our opponent to gain three lower. Uh, if I have no board. By putting the Elsa in play, you actually gave your opponent the opportunity to have Aladdin to even gain two more lore. And since we're playing to just not, you know, mm -hmm. not lose, the better play would have just been like, I'll just sit my Elsa down. And that's just where you're at at this point in the game where you know that removal is coming and you don't have a way to force that lore to come because you're just throwing down at your characters and you still have that additional turn before you can actually quest with them, which is what's drawing out the Be Prepares yeah. and the Dragon Fires and the Maleficent and yeah, then Elsa I, comes I, in, unless you're shifting this I, late into the game. Unless the game was awarded additional time that we weren't told, uh, this should be the last turn of the game. Mm. 
And I've been kind of trying to peer over and see if it's Fair. being afforded at the time because some people were still playing on right. their respective tables or if we are following through with the turn limitation in overtime. Right. So we, either way, we should be nearing the end because I'm seeing less and less people sitting down at their stations yeah. <laughs> yeah. and more and more of them ready to get into the next one. Yeah, I mean, you have to hope that overtime doesn't last more than 10 minutes. Uh, it's also never a good thing when you get called in time and you're like, oh, okay, I have six turns to do whatever I want. It's like, all right, listen, like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> like, like your turn still didn't, doesn't need to take five minutes. Like, yeah. Let's just let's, let's finish the game, guys. <laughs> They're enjoying the stage. Yeah. You know? It's a nice yeah, there's little a, elevation. It looks like there's like a little gaming lounge here for mm -hmm. with a monitor set up so the players can check out the feature area too. That's cool. I can respect that. Yeah. I like that. I really do like the setup here. The vibe. You yeah. Know, the vibe. It's got a good vibe. Good view of the featured match for this particular round. You yeah. got the program feed. Good temperature. I don't know about you, but that's always one of my concerns at mm, conventions yeah. and venues is, do I need to bring a jacket because yeah. it's going to be freezing yeah, or are all the bodies going to just heat yeah. it up? That's why I brought the hoodie just in yeah. case. I was like, I'll bring the hoodie and then we'll, we'll see how it feels. <laughs> I did pack one, but did not bring it so i'm actually <laughs> pretty relieved we're, that we're it's happy. a neutral temperature right now but without having to experience the humidity from yeah. outside too much if anybody starts sweating in here i think it's more because of the competitive pressure <laughs> than the actual venue itself all right so nope. i don't the way this turn is going it looks to me that there's a chance that there's been additional turns yeah. uh that's the only re like the, the straight like the line that carlos has made here is what makes me feel that way i just don't I don't know that it was actually awarded. Yeah, we'll see. We're we're trying our best to be the eyes and ears of chat and giving them the intel as we find out. But I'm assuming that early on in these tournaments, there's always a bit of flexibility, right, as we're yeah. kind of trying to get to know the pacing, how things are going to play through in these particular mirror matches, because right. you know you're going to get them quite frequently. Right. So right here's, our, here's our first lore dividends. So mm -hmm. we go to 16, um, and we're obviously very much representing the win at this point. Uh, it looks like we're maxed out on our ink. We still we were able to play another broom. We were able to, so we didn't. We're not going to mill out next turn. Um, my my guess here is if the game is ending, then it will be a draw. But it, it, it he played to make it look like he there he was somehow going to get more turns. But we just we weren't we're we're unaware if that's true or not. I'm trying to learn more from the way that they're playing yeah. the pace well, of said, it. Then. The way yeah. this turn has gone, it, it, it played out like this is not my last right, turn. Right, right. So since, yeah. since that's the case, then that's fine. Let's see. Okay. Showing through. All right. Carlos and Eric, a standstill in lore for quite some time as we yeah. are about to we, be I 10 believe, minutes into overtime. I believe we dipped up to 16 lore with the Aladdin mm -hmm. trade there. So it should be 16 yep. to 8. All right, 16. That is almost in the key window, right? When you think about Ursula's yeah, and so Elsa's with that, the three lore, the that, four is almost at that final finishing spot. The be prepared right there was very much yeah. the, you can't beat me, uh, we're going to draw. Yeah. That's all Eric cares about right now. Is I mean, that's he wasn't... Now, he has a bunch of cards still left in his deck. He drew a lot less cards. There's, like, an argument that, you know... I, I guess in the players' stance right now, there might be a conversation going like, you know, now that you put all your stakes in, could you have actually come back to beat me? But that's a 50-minute round, right? Like, that's 50-minute round, six turns. That's that's kind of just what happens. Was that a draw? Draw. It was a draw. It's a draw, everybody. Draw. It is a draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't hear it out in the, the venue if you're watching on stream, but some, right. some excitement.